Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eleven Things Stretch. My name is Alex Schneider, along with my good friend and co-host, as always. My name is Paul Eppie, but Alex, I haven't talked to you in a while. We've not done a podcast in a while. I almost forgot who I was. Yeah, we, yeah, we, um, we had a busy. Well, at least I had a busy uh, break. I took a winter class, so I was kind of doing that. Plus, had four Christmases this year. Actually, like five Christmases or something like that. I don't know. It's crazy. So me and Paul actually didn't actually get together and talk um, for a while. We talked off and on about some things that were happening, um, but always here towards the end of the break with New Year's coming up and everybody trying to get in last minute, seeing families and all that kind of good stuff. We weren't able to get in and get a podcast, which wasn't too bad because not a whole lot has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to kind of get into some of those smaller topics, and then our big topic today not going to tease it we're going to discuss our 2017 hall of fame ballot and the people that we would choose now we're not we're not choosing 10 me we are choosing five or six of our own a piece which will come out to 10 to 12 whatever um some of these are probably going to be the same don't know i mean we're, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants on this one but we needed to get something out there to you guys um so paul with the start of school tomorrow um, okay. Let's put out a pretty good podcast. Absolutely. And, uh, let's do it. Because we are recording this on Sunday, uh, January 8th, hopefully going out Monday, January 9th. 9th. Yep. So we will actually probably be in school when this thing goes up on the internet. So, Paul, let's get it started. Uh, the first topic we want to go with, um, since it's been a while since we talked anything Cardinals, is there's been a rumor out there that the Cardinals are talking a trade for Brian Dozier from the Twins because – they don't feel like Colt Wong is a secure spot at second base. Paul, without going in too deep, but just that kind of a basic headline, what are your thoughts? Uh, it would be stupid for the Cardinals to do it because while I love Brian Dozier, he's I, I think he's the best second baseman, or maybe, maybe the, the second best after Cano, but I think he's... Whoa, did you just say Cano's the best second base? Altuve. Yeah, I'll go Altuve, Cano. I'll go third best second base. Wow. Sorry, I I know you were probably blowing your mind on that. Um, He's really underrated because he plays for the Twins. But it makes no sense for the Cardinals to get him because they have touted Wong so much over the past two seasons, and they seem pretty committed, as of right now, to give him more playing time. They said this last year. It obviously didn't work. They're saying going to get in this year, and I'm inclined to believe them. Uh, so why would you give up Wong and maybe like a Luke Weaver type prospect for Brian Dozier? Dozier's great, All Star, uh, one of the better second basemen in the league. But there's no need for him. Uh, if the Cardinals get him, great. I you know I wouldn't be really upset, but there's no need to to go get him considering the pieces you have now. Yeah, and I'm not going to go into depth. I'm just going to expand on what you have. Um, one thing about Brian Dozier that kind of confused me is everybody's it's an now lead. Brian Dozier didn't start hitting like he's been hitting except for like two years ago. So he's had this consistent power hitting numbers for two years, and that's it. Um, his defense is average. He doesn't make all the great plays. Colton Wong, his range is way, way better right. um, than Brian Dozier, hands down. If you want um, the offense, and, and, Dozier's the way to go. But if you want the defense, you got to stick with Wong. Yeah, and if – if you know you've been you know listening to us since the start of the off season, and you're a true Cardinal fan, the the meaning of this off season was defense. And if you're gonna flip that real quick because you just don't like Wong, you're a hypocrite because Wong's the best, one of the best defensive second basemen, probably in the league defensively wise, not all around, just defense. And you guys now all of a sudden are like, hey, we need Brian Dozier because mm-hmm. we didn't hit enough home runs last year and lose games. Well, let's get another guy to hit a bunch of home runs and we still lose games. You guys forget that Colton Wong was your starting second baseman when you won 100 and some odd games a couple years right. ago. And one of the and, things that I saw on this on this report that came out like a week or two ago was the fact that the Cardinals might just be sort of putting this out there and, 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 and floating Brian Dozier's name out there because that way the Dodgers pay more for Dozier. So the Twins come to the Cardinals and say, hey, what do you want for Dozier? Um, that way they can ask or that way they can go back to the Dodgers who's, who they've also had interest in, in trading with and say, hey, the Cardinals are going to give us this, this, and this. What are you going to do to up their offer? And that's kind of what the possible rumor has. Okay, so the Cardinals have this. What are the Dodgers going to do to make their offer seem sweeter? Yeah. Um, and then there was uh, one thing else that I was going to expand on that I have completely lost. 
Oh, um, and, and here's a big thing, too, is Colton Wong, uh, the reason that he didn't really start a whole lot of games last year, like they said, you had Jed Jerko who came out of the gate and was fire and was fire stop, all man. season. Yeah, yeah it was fire all season. Um, his defense is not that great, but a bat like that, that was that hot all season, you can't keep him out of your lineup. You just can't. I mean, we were saying it on the show. You have to find a spot for him to bat in your lineup third you know, or like fifth, you have to find that spot for him. Um, so that's that's why and Colton Wong is so young and still has so much upside left that you know if you give him the confidence of hey you're our starting second baseman and I thought that they did that last year with the five year contract. You know if you give him the confidence, hey you're our starting second baseman, you're gonna be it. I need you to go out in the off season, practice your butt off, train to get ready for second base. Done. It's a done deal. So that's your little bit of Cardinal news coming out. Other than that, there's really not been a whole lot circling the team um, other than the Dexter Fowler signing, which we've talked about that before. Um, moving on, I'm going to introduce the next thing. Um, a guy that was circled around in Cardinals talks for a very long time that we had talked about at length, and literally right after we put out a podcast, he was signed like a yeah. day later. It was, um, the, is, it was the next day, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Double E, Evan Encarnacion. I believe it was a four-year deal or a three-year deal. Um, it was four. With the Indians. Um, I can actually look it up here real quick. It was a three-year deal. Three, okay. Three-year contract with the with the Cleveland Indians um, because it looks like the Cleveland Indians aren't going to re-sign Mike Napoli, and we will actually talk about that after this. Paul, your thoughts on the Cleveland Indians signing Edwin Encarnacion? Did they get better Sm- oh, or did yeah. they get worse? Oh, much better. Much better. And it doesn't make any sense for, the, for any National League team to sign Encarnacion. We said on that last podcast, or at least I did, that – It'd be nice to have him, but considering the years and the money he wants and the positions he's going to play, it's not really worth it. If the Cardinals get him, great, because the Cardinals need a cleanup hitter. I'm not sure Steven Piscotti is a cleanup hitter right now. Edwin Edwin Encarnacion is a great cleanup hitter, and he would have been awesome to have have had. But it, it was no fit, and he was a much better fit on literally any American League roster. And... Cleveland is 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 throwing their hat in the next season as a p- possible World Series contender again, division contender for sure, and they set themselves up really well. And I'm not surprised. And 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 Cardinal fans really shouldn't be that that disappointed because he was never a good fit for this team. He was a good fit in the order, but in terms of position and how many games he'd play, it made no sense to get him. Yeah, and the Cardinals still have interest in like J.D. Martinez trading for him too, but I think they're pretty much set. Um, yeah, I, I think the Edwin Encarnacion sign, like you said, would have been great if it would have happened. Um, we have that that legit bat. Um, but again, the theme of the offseason has been defense. Um, and with that being said, I think another thing for the offseason has been the fat guys on the, in the league are losing weight. Mm-hmm. Case in point, Matt Adams has apparently lost a lot of weight and is shredding down. He wants to play first base. Now, here's the thing, is I can see that happening. Matt Carpenter, not a true first baseman, and I don't care what anybody says, not everybody can play first base. We have talked about that before. Um, Matt Carpenter is a very good third baseman. Um, so if Johnny Peralta is like, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling this whole third base stuff, I need, I want to be traded, boom, done. Matt Carpenter slides back over to the third, and Matt Adams is starting at first. Um, you know, you see the same trend with the weight loss with Pablo Sandoval. He lost like – 150 pounds skinny guy now because his job is open and the Red Sox they traded Travis Shaw Pablo Sandoval is back in so the Edwin Encarnacion did it affect the Cardinals directly no not really because I don't I didn't think that we were going to sign him it would have been nice but uh, nonetheless a key free agent that was on there for a while is now off Um, and definitely like you said I, I think hands down makes them better offensively Um, Because now I I guess Carlos Santana is now going to be their first baseman, Mm -hmm. um, I would assume. Uh, So speaking of Mike Napoli, to get into the last topic, um, I love hearing these stories just because I love when the player comes back home, home in quotation marks, air quotes, sorry. Um, And that is Mike Napoli is rumored to have some interest in the Texas Rangers as long as well as, and this is the big part, Tyson Ross. Paul, my question is not what, how you feel about Tyson Ross getting interest directly from the Rangers. My question to you is, do you feel like the league 
the way that it's set up and the way GMs think that Tyson Ross is getting unfair treatment because he played for basically the Padres, a good pitcher, no, basically nothing so, towards him. So are you saying that it's unfair that he basically gets gets no attention? Yeah, because oh, he's absolutely. not that big name. He's, I mean, he's one of the best pitchers that was on the market this year, and had had nobody was nobody was right. paying him any mind. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's back up here. In case you didn't know, Tyson Ross, you probably haven't heard of him because he didn't pitch this year. He he started the first game of the season on the first day of the season against, I believe it was the Dodgers on ESPN because I, I remember watching it, and he exited the game in like the first inning or so, or something like that, or like right the Hold on, let me see. Sorry, the fifth inning. And he was never to be seen again. And he's a really good pitcher. And people don't pay attention to that because he's been playing with the Padres. I have a stat line pulled up here. In 2014, he was an all-star. He threw 195 innings. 2015, he threw 196 innings with a 3.26 ERA. I mean, that's really good. 10-12 and 12 record. He would have been a lot better if he was playing on a team that could score him some runs and a ballpark that could score the runs in. But I think he's he's flying so far under the radar. I think I think the Cardinals should go should go out and hit, get him. I know the Cubs have been rumored, the Rangers have been rumored, and I'm sure there's a whole bucket. I'm sure there's a whole bucket of teams that want him on their roster because he's a really good pitcher. Yeah, but the, and the thing is, is. It seems like none of the reporters, you know, and me and me and Paul are actually going. Not we're not going to school for reporting, but it's a media thing, and you know we see trends in media. And the crappy thing about baseball media is if you don't make an All Star game nine out of like eleven years, you're not a name that anybody cares about. To me personally, I want to see where Tyson Ross goes because I like yeah. the transformation. He goes ten and twelve. Ten and twelve in San Diego is like going. 30 and 2 with the Cubs last year. Like, that's literally like the turnaround. Yeah. I, it, not literally, you know, but that's the turnaround. He's on a bad team and still almost had a winning record. A really bad team almost had a winning record. I want to see where his numbers are going to be if he gets to be on a contender. If he does go to the Rangers, they do need pitching very badly. I think he'd pair, put him in that rotation with uh, Cole Hamels and Yu uh, Darvish. Shit, man. And Mr. Consistency, Colby Lewis. Yeah, I mean, they've got to be a World Series contender as well. Yeah, because they let Derek Holland walk right out the front door, and he went to the White Sox. Um, And Derek Holland was one of those guys that was an all-star, was supposed to be a breakout superstar, and, well, it hasn't. He had Mm -hmm. Tommy John surgery and hasn't been able to function. Um, So, with that being said, that's kind of our small topic, kind of wrapping up the league news, what's going on, kind of the headlines. Um we're going to move into our big topic of the night, which is the uh, uh, Hall of Fame Hall ballot. Hall of Fame voting, yep. Yep. Um, we're going to pick five kind of of our own players, maybe give a little exp- explanation as to why, unless they don't need it. Um, I kind of have a couple people on here that are, might be controversial. Um, I don't know about Paul, um, but I, I do. Um, so, Paul... I guess let's dive into this thing. What do you say? Yeah, let's. Um, before I just name my players, I I do want to name some some people who are on the ballot. So there's at least some some reference to go off of. The okay. big names on this ballot, and I'm gonna rattle off about ten to twelve names here. So bear with me. Uh, Jeff Bagwell, Tim Raines, Trevor Hoffman, Kurt Schilling, Roger Clemens, Barry Bonds, uh, Edgar Martinez, Mike Mussina. Gary Sheffield, Larry Walker, Sammy Sosa, Ivan Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez, Vladimir Guerrero, uh, Jorge Posada, uh, Maglio Ordonez, Maglio Ordonez, uh, Tim Wakefield, Edgar Renteria. Um, Is that it? Am I missing anybody important? I mean, um, Jason Veritek. I I've always liked Jason Veritek. He's not on my ballot to to, sure. to say, but. Um, that's so, just because he's in a really good class as of right now. Yeah, those are the types of names that we have on this list. If you want the full list, go to Google and just type in 2017 MLB Hall of Fame ballot, and there's a baseball reference link. It takes you to the page, and it tells you what their percent of ballots they're on right now, and it gives you all the information you need. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we're going to name five each, and we're going to defend our choices. Alex, uh, to start, I was thinking about this 
right before I came on the show, and I had a conundrum of do I include the PED guys or not. And I eventually came up with yes, I should, because I have said on the show repeatedly that I think PED users should be in the Hall of Fame, but they should, but that should be noted on their plaque, or they should have an exhibit in the Hall of Fame, but put them in, but everybody should know these people used PEDs. So, with that said... And, and here's my quick thing, because I got a PED user on here myself. I at least have one. Um, PEDs make you just stronger, faster. They don't make your hand-eye coordination better. Right. So if you're a, a hitter and you take PEDs, that doesn't make you automatically hit the ball. It doesn't make you, like, superhuman. It just makes you... It, a, a stronger. But the guy, right. the hitters that took PEDs were hitting home runs already, and the pitchers that took PEDs were striking out people already. Mm-hmm. A lot of them take it as a, hey, I'm hurt. I need to recover quickly. PED. The, Boom. And, and that's exactly what A-Rod did. I mean, you can say whatever you want about him, and he's a complete jerk, and... and, and... He's no, he's he's in no position to judge anybody because I I think of him as a fairly deplorable human being, but he's still a great hitter and he's, he was still a great baseball player. I just exactly. don't think you should. When you're telling the history of anything, in 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 this case, it's the history of baseball. I don't think you just leave out the bad. I think you tell the entire story, and that's what including the PED guys does. So, I'm gonna get to my ballot real quick. Uh, do you want to go? Me name five, you name five, or do you want to go one, one? Just go one, one. Okay. We'll go. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. Um, if you're watching this and you we're, we told you the list, we'll go down the list, and when we find one of our guys, the first guy, we'll say it, and then we'll just go from there. So, Paul, yeah. start off with your number one guy from the top. Uh, Jeff Bagwell, and he's the number one guy on this list, and, and it's, uh, it's hard to argue for me. Uh, he was part of the Killer Bees with the Astros. Uh... Bergman, or sorry, Bagwell, Beltron, Berkman, Biggio. Some, Biggio, yeah, I mean, that's that, that was an incredible lineup with the Astros. Um, I'm going to gloss over his stats, just because I am a stat guy, you're, you're much more of a... Um, what do you, what do you I, show me, kind of a person? Yeah, what do you show me, type person on the field. Um, Jeff Bagwell, his awards, he finished Rookie of the Year in 1991, he won the MVP in 1994, uh, he was an all-star, it looks like, four or five years. Yeah, four years. Uh, he finished in the MVP voting the majority of his career. Um, he finished with 1,500 career RBIs, 449 home runs, 2,300 hits, and a career batting average of 297. So, overall, well-rounded player. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go with Jeff Bagwell. Um, I, he's I think not on he's, your ballot, really. Well, no, he would be if we had 10, but I think that there's more okay. people on this list that kind of deserve maybe a little bit more. Um, to me, they deserve a little bit more. One, because when you're when you're voting like this, it, it, it would be different if it was just up to me to pick 10 and those get in. You know, you're so, talking so about he ballot. he would be on your ballot, but you're just not going to mention him in, in the show. Yeah, if I, had, sure. if I was an actual voter... He would be on my ballot of ten. I mean, okay. definitely. But with the ballot of five, I think there's a few more people. Because when we're doing these ballots, me and Paul are doing these ballots like we're the only two voters. We're voting as if we're a baseball writer, and we're going to get the crap back from it. So, yes, if it's up to me and I have ten full votes, Jeff Bagwell is on mine, for sure. But in the case of this show, and I have five, my first one goes to the second year uh, on the ballot, Trevor Hoffman. I don't have to explain this man's stats. If you do not, if you're a baseball fan and don't know who Trevor Hoffman is, just stop. Look him up because yeah. Trevor Hoffman, other than Mariano Rivera, and honestly, Trevor Hoffman to me was better playing in San Diego than Mariano Rivera was playing in Yank at in the Yankees. Trevor Hoffman is probably one of the best relievers to ever play the game ever. Oh, no, there's no there's no question because yeah. he's, second he, he's, best technically by yeah. awards or by a save numbers, um, Trevor Hoffman is one or two, arguably, in uh, the uh, on, on the ballot or in, in Major League Baseball. I'm going to rattle off some of his stats just to kind of goof off. His batting average is 118. No, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do hey, that. Hey, so so while you do that, I'm going to. So you you name Trevor Hoffman's stats. I'll name uh, Rivera's stats. 
just to just to compare because people I don't I mean it's oh okay well easier I, to I see that know. way. So what was Hoffman's uh, career ERA? Hold on, let me get here. He's third from the top. Career ERA two eighty seven. Okay, uh, Rivera was uh, two twenty one. Okay. Um, Whip Game was saved. One. Obviously, it was Rivera one, Hoffman two. Yeah. It doesn't even tell me his. How about games. Uh, oh, that's how about home run? Uh, how about home runs allowed? Does it even say that on here? Yeah. So just it, go to the standard pitching category and then just go to home runs. Oh, a hundred. Trevor Hoffman had seventy-one. You mean Mario Rivera had seventy-one? So yeah, sorry, yeah, Rivera has seventy-one. Um, okay. okay, so what was his whip? What was Mario Rivera's whip? One, just one. One. One exactly. Yeah. His was one point zero five eight. So pretty damn close. Okay. Yeah. Um. What about uh, strikeouts per nine? Go a couple categories over. S O nine. It just says S O. Because I don't have strikeouts per nine. In the standard pitching category, about the third category from the right. Where standard pitching? Oh, are you actually? Did you like click his name? Because I'm, yeah. I'm on the I'm on the website I'm on the website with the ballot. Yeah, go so with his... the, click, click on his name and then okay. in the standard pitching category, in the, it's the third category from the right. You have awards, a strikeout, some different strikeout category, then strikeout per nine. So nine. What the French toast? I'm on standard pitching. He's got so many freaking stats. <laughs> there it is. Strikeouts per nine was nine. Point four, I think. Hold on, let me see. It's either nine point four or nine point seven. Rivera had eight point two. So I mean, they're 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 yeah, they're, they're so similar that I mean, it almost doesn't matter yeah. because they're just so similar. Yeah. So, so uh, like I said, Kurt Schill, or uh, Trevor Hoffman is the first guy on my ballot of five. Um, and he's on and he's on mine too. So I have two, and okay. we just discuss the reason. So I'll let, I'll let you do your your your, your second one right now. Okay, I was going to do Kurt Schilling, um, but I, I can't bring myself to do Kurt Schilling because I have other people I think that deserve to be on this thing. Um, so my next guy is the controversial guy that I was talking about, and that's because I love this guy. And I, I didn't, you've heard me talk PEDs on the show, and I hate them, absolutely hate them. I don't know why I give this guy the, uh, you know, like, hey, it's what you know, all these guys, bad, bad, bad. But this guy, he's cool. I don't know why I do that. I absolutely love Barry Bonds. Um, love, 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 love Barry Bonds. Uh, baseball is, it, 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 to me, is a show. It, if I go and I want to watch a baseball game, I don't want to sit through a bunch of pitching. It's... Unless it's a no hit or a perfect game, I don't want to just watch pitching. I want some guy to go up there and hit home runs. I heard it's entertainment. A quote. Yeah, it's exactly. entertainment. Right. I heard a quote. It was off of a TV show. I don't want to name it. But it was, I think people would pay more money to watch a bunch of meat-covered robots hit the ball 600 feet. And I, I completely agreed. I would love to see guys hit the ball as far as Barry Bonds did. Barry Bonds, by far, is on my list, hands down, on my list. He's on, he's on my list, too, for the reasons that I said earlier. I think he, had the, he was never convicted, per se, of... Tried DDs, multiple, multiple times. But... but but in the court of public opinion, he's as guilty as guilty gets. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you 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 put him in. Uh, I don't like saying that, but you also have to understand how good of a hitter he was, even in the in the nineties, early nineties, before PEDs became like a huge huge deal. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I I think you put him in. He's your all time home run leader. He finished. He had three MVP. No, sorry, no. Uh, like five MVPs, six MVPs, or wait, no, sorry, seven MVPs. My bad. Uh, just a whole slew of All Star games. Um, <laughs> yeah. He was one of those guys it's like so every hard year to put him out. It's an All Star game. Yeah, it's it's so hard to keep him out. Uh, and I think that his numbers, defensive numbers so. were actually pretty good. They weren't terrible for being yeah. as big as he was in playing left field. His WAR was one sixty two. Like that is a crazy yeah. number. Right. 
you're talking he's the highest on this ballot right now at 162, and Roger Clemens is at 140. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that your third guy then? He's my third, yeah. All right. Um, my third guy is one that should have been in a long, long time ago, and I think this marks the way for more people to get in. Um, and that's Edgar Martinez, the DH for Seattle. Um, really? You want him in? Okay. Yeah, yes, I do. Because if you put David Ortiz in before you put Edgar Martinez in, there's an issue. Edgar Martinez was by far one of the best hitters to ever play the game. Well, here, they're right above each other. Listen to these stats, people. Edgar Martinez never once surfaced that he did PEDs, never once surfaced that he was even questioned about PEDs, not one time. Here's I'm going to read you. Barry Bonds' batting average was 298. Edgar Martinez, 312. On base plus slugging, or no, on base percentage for Barry Bonds, because he got walked a whole bunch because he hit home runs if mm-hmm. he didn't, was 444. Edgar Martinez, 418. Slugging, Barry Bonds again, like 1,050 home runs, 607 slugging. Edgar Martinez was 515. On base plus slugging for Barry Bonds, 1.051. Edgar Martinez is 933. And you're talking about a guy that did it all natural, didn't beef up at any point in his career where you're like, holy crap, where'd he come from? Did it from the DH spot in a big ballpark in Seattle, put up those kind of numbers. Yes, I think with by these numbers, you put him in hands down without a doubt. He's a, he was a great player, no doubt, but I, I just don't know where you draw the line for Hall of Fame material because he he finished in top three of MVP voting once where he finished third. He had 100 RBIs in a season six times in in 18 seasons. Um, let's see. Um, he never had more than 100 strikeouts other than his last season, which is impressive. I will give him credit for that. Um, I just don't think the awards and accolades are there. Great player, but, but, I mean, you have to draw the line somewhere, and he's my cutoff line, honestly. You can't... Because people talk about, like... You can't tell talk, me that he's a great player and then go on and tell me that he's not worthy of some votes in the, all, in the Hall of Fame people, ballot. People discuss whether a guy like Yadier Molina should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and then those who say no, not quite yet, are going to cite the facts that he has two World Series. You need a, you need more than that. Uh, he, he needs an MVP. Uh, he needs a couple more Gold Gloves. He's going up against Buster Posey um, of this era, and it's going to be hard for him to get in. It is current numbers. These numbers don't don't scream out anything to me. Kind of like Yachty's don't. I mean, unless he he needs to put on more beef. What do you? I mean. Okay. Okay. So then, how many MVPs does Jeff Bagwell win? He has one. Okay, so you're one. one. He has one and a, and a uh, rookie of the year. Okay, so he has more one. Than, more he, than okay, what, I get uh, that. He has one MVP. But have you seen his stats? Don't even touch Edgar Martinez. Don't even come close. You're talking about a guy who didn't. Well, Jeff Bagwell was also known for his defense. Jeff Bagwell, 297, 408 OBP, 540 slugging. His slugging percentage beats out, but none of his other stats, all his OPS does. Other than that, I. Edgar Martin. Here's the thing: is the the he has more base, hits. Bagwell has more hits in in three less seasons. Um, this is this is the part of baseball that makes me mad because where do you draw the line? Okay, he's a DH. Did he play major league baseball? Yes. Did he put up some of the best numbers on in that position ever? Yes. Because yes. when you compare, you know, let's say you compare. Um, Oh, you know, a well, Will Craig Biggio, who was a defensive guy. Do you compare him to the position he played at second base to all the other second basemen in the Hall of Fame? You sure do. Well, Edgar Martinez can't compare it to another DH because there isn't any. Mm-hmm. He needs to go in. You're talking about a guy. You 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 can go on and see uh, if you watch MLB Network at all, and this comes up. There's a lot of conversation behind Edgar Martinez. And there's a whole bunch of people that are like, well, he's the best best DH to ever play the game. He's got this, this, that, and this, but not in the Hall of Fame. So then apparently he's not the best DH in the game because he's not wearing the, the jacket that says so. So, 
you know, yeah, do you have to draw a line. Sure, yeah, you do. There's so many people on this list, like J.D. Drew, not going to get in. Jorge Posada, not going to get in. Maglio Ordonez, not going to get in. Derek Lee, <laughs> no. <laughs> Melvin Moore, I don't even know who that is. No, probably not. Okay, but 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 considering all all Edgar Martinez did is play DH, so all the only thing he did was hit, uh, Bagwell has... Uh, Bagwell has more home runs, more hits, more OPS, and um, not the same slow game. But I mean, but considering all all Martinez did was hit and play DH, you'd think he'd have better offensive numbers, and he didn't. And Bagwell played three less seasons, and some of his numbers are still better. Yeah, well, because when you play more seasons, Plus you have the has opportunity to make your numbers either worse or better. So Bagwell could have went into another three seasons and played the same amount Possible. and did worse Possible. and screwed his stats. I'm, you know, this is – my problem is, is yes, I believe Edgar Martinez needs him because he is the best at that position. When you elect somebody into the Hall of Fame, you elect them to the where they at and other people at that position. The only people that you don't, Barry Bonds. No one compares him to left fielders. Because they don't care. They can, They want his hitting numbers in the Hall of Fame. Edgar Martinez is a DH, deserves to be in. Because how do you win games? It's people driving in runs. And Edgar Martinez did that for countless years, over and over again. And didn't strike out a whole lot either. So that that's my case for him. Um, Paul, you made it a very uh, good argument as to yeah, why I mean, there's arguments to go both ways. you're staticky. Um. So, Paul's having a little static issue with the microphone, so I'm going to go ahead and do my fourth guy. Might come as a shock. I'm going all the way down at the bottom of the list, basically, of the people who don't have boats. Um, and that's Pudge Rodriguez, Yvonne Rodriguez. Uh, Yadier Molina gets gets uh, compared to him all the time because Yvonne Rodriguez has a lot of gold gloves as a catcher. You know, if you're going to compare him to catchers, which is a huge defensive standpoint, I could care less about what he hit. Juan Rodriguez was a, a, a golden masterpiece for defensive catchers and in my mind still is when it comes to baseball history. I think nobody will pass him gold glove wise, defensively wise. He was just that good. He worked so hard at his game and especially back then when people were stealing bases, didn't really care for the home run too much. You're stealing bags, you're running, you're running, you're running. Juan Rodriguez did a damn good job of keeping people off base and I know I wasn't going to say this, had almost a 300 average had a 334 OBP, a 464 slugging, a 798 OPS. Those are pretty good offensive numbers for a guy that won a whole shit ton of gold gloves. My fourth guy is Vladimir Guerrero. Um, we we brought his name up briefly yesterday when we were talking about this show. And uh, here's why. Uh, he had 16 years in the league, 450, 449 home runs, 1,500 RBIs, a career uh, 318 batting average, 379 OBP, 553 slugging, and here's the stat that, that I like the most, other than the fact that he has one MVP. He never struck out more than 100 times. In fact, he, he never struck out more than 84 times. In today's game, you see so many players strike out so much that it, it I mean, I can feel the breeze from the stands. Vladimir Guerrero was not that guy. And it was, I mean... And if you watched him hit some of the balls that you think were unhittable, they would bounce on the ground, and then he would hit them. It was incredible. His his hitting range was from the ground to the moon. I mean, it was so wide, he could hit anything coming right at him, and it was awesome to watch. Um, yeah, there's my case for Vladimir Guerrero. You do know Vladimir Guerrero was more of a DH at the end of his career, right? Age-wise, yeah, I mean, I understand that. Just saying, you're talking sure. about a guy now that you're putting in that played some DH. I'm not saying probably you can't play of, DH. Probably about half of his career at DH. I'm not saying you no, can't no, no. put in a and, DH. And, and, and here's the thing is I'm totally agreeing with you because Vladimir Guerrero is my fifth guy on my ballot that's going in. Okay. And hands down, Vladimir Guerrero might be one of the best all-around hitters. He literally, what Paul said, isn't fake could hit anything this you just chucked an egg at him he'd hit the egg over the fence and it wouldn't crack like that's how good of a hitter this guy was insane again 
where do you draw his line? Because his offense, or his defensive numbers, I think, weren't that good. It was average at best, right? Exactly. So was more of a hitter than a fielder. Yeah, he did stand out there and look pretty, but I'm sure Edgar Martinez played a little bit of first base and stood out there and looked pretty too. So again, you go back to where do you draw this line? Because now your line's getting a little hazy there, Paul. So, uh, so, so, and. This is supposed to be hazy. This is meant to be hazy. So <laughs> this is they make this ballot to piss other people off. Is what is is why they do this. So, what's your case for Vladimir Guerrero? We'll do your fifth and then my fifth and then we'll wrap it up. My fifth is Vladimir Guerrero. Um, I was fortunate enough to where I could see some of his uh, career towards the end that I can remember, and I absolutely have fallen in love with Vladimir Guerrero. I have loved Vladimir Guerrero ever since I started paying attention. Um, to baseball this guy is i don't know how old he is but he still hits in his home country he still hits he still competes in home run derbies and wins you know he was the guy that after batting gloves were invented he was the guy everybody was like whoa he doesn't use batting gloves and he's hitting these balls over the fence you know why he used old-fashioned dirt pine tar and smacked those balls right over the fence he was a he was a Barry Bonds without the PEDs, and hit pretty damn well. Right, even in his older years, um, Vladimir Guerrero by far is probably the best all around hitter, probably besides Pete Rose, to ever play the game. You think so? Um, okay. I I I, hand, I mean, dude, you're talking masterpiece hitting. What about just you? like what about just row? like. Oh yeah, by hand, yeah, hands down. Sure. Yeah, okay, I guess you say Vladimir Guerrero is the best all around power hitter, all around power hitter dash hitter to ever play the game. Okay. Sure. Ichiro, what Ichiro did wasn't one masterpiece; it was an art. Just, yeah. Ichiro, you'd be like, "Hey, can you place it four feet behind the second baseman?" <laughs> oh sure, four feet behind the second baseman. There it is. You know, <laughs> he still does it. Yeah, and he's like a hundred years old. He's got some gray up there. I see that salt. Yeah, pepper he does. Hair. He's um, so real quick, since I just thought of it, one of these podcasts, you know, towards the end, I'd like to get into the discussion of Pete Rose, um, because a guy in my mind that is a huge, um, figure okay. in baseball yeah, as an all around hitter, not on a roster or not on this. And if you don't know, we will inform you then as to why, but with that being said, Paul, who's yeah. your fifth guy? Because we're down towards the bottom and I'm seeing a lot of these names and I don't know if I see one on here. I see well, maybe one. That's because that I don't I have. Play. That's because I don't have a guy at the bottom. I have a guy at the very top, and his name is Roger Clemens. Again, same as Barry Bonds. I, the guy's character. We can question that all day. He's not a good guy. I'm not going to say he's a good guy. I. Um, you'll never hear the words Roger Clemens and good judgment of character in the same sentence for me. It's just, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, I, get, I, I can make one. Paul's a good judgment of character because he doesn't like Roger Clemens' character. Well, Boom. I will take that as a compliment. Boom. Um, Boom. Proved you wrong. He on, cheated. On. He, he probably cheated. He cheated, yes. You can say everything about him. But, gosh, he was so good, dude. I mean, you can't argue with these numbers. I mean, th- this is all-time great numbers. Lynn, let me rattle this off for you. He had one, two, three, four, five. He had seven Cy Young Awards. One MVP. His career spanned 24 seasons from 84 to 2007 with a career uh, ERA of 3.12. He threw over 200 innings uh, f- like 10 plus times. I mean, I'm not even going to count how many times he threw over 200 innings on here. Um, his career record is 354 in 184. If you win 300, the 350 plus games, you should be in. Uh, again, put it on his plaque. Cheater. That's fine. But he still won all this many games, and that takes talent. Um, do I really have to make the case for him other than that? I mean, he's one of the all-time great pitchers. I agree. I totally agree. Um, real quick, I, real quick, I'm towards the bottom of the list now. Um, some people that we, we, we rattled off that you're not going to hear us say um, that actually some of them played for the Cardinals. J.D. Drew. Mm-hmm. No, um, Edgar Mar- Edgar Renteria. No, he was an average shortstop. Played pretty good defense. 
The one guy I think that has a fighting chance, and he's number 29 on this list of 34, um, is Jason Veritek. Sure. He's a first-year guy, so has an opportunity to stay on. I just don't know if his numbers – he's the he's, – he is – you know how they refer it, you know, all around baseball. When you say the captain, you think of number two. Well, in Boston, if you say the captain, it's Jason Veritek. Yep. Like that's that's their captain. Every team's got their captain. Jason Veritek is Boston's captain, just like probably Yadier Molina is our captain. Yep. You know, um, so I don't know. I'm not going to dive into his numbers. Um, his offensive numbers don't look that great. His batting average wise, um, but uh, just a guy that was, well, the captain for mm-hmm. Boston. Yeah, I mean, what so, else can you say other than that, right? It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, there's uh, there's some other names on here. Um, you know, some of these guys just getting on here because it's that time and they're the big-name player. Jorge Posada is one of those. He was just fortunate enough to be on some good Yankee teams to win a bunch of championships. His catching really wasn't that great, uh, I don't think. Um, he was a switch hitter, which makes him better. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he a switch hitter? Yeah, I believe he was. Yeah. Um, so, Maybe not late in his career, but, I mean, yeah. Middle of his career, yeah. So, I don't have anything else on this, Paul. Um, again, uh, uh, before I sign off and let Paul finish up the talking, uh, thank you guys for being patient. School's starting back up for us, so we are hopefully going to have more of these videos up. Paul's just been lazy and sleeping all day. That's why we haven't got nothing done. So, no, I'm just playing. Um, so... Uh, thank you guys for sticking around with us. Sorry for the late stuff. Uh, and, Paul, if I don't get to talk to you this first week, have the good first week of school. Yeah, let's uh, let's get it over with. I mean, just yeah, tear off summer's, the mandate, so. summer's calling, and yeah. i got a vacation planned for May. I'm going to Florida, baby. So. Very nice. Oh, man, I can't wait. So thank you guys so much. Plan on more content coming out. we got spring training starting up real soon. Can't wait. The, the Cardinals winter warm-up is next weekend, so if you have not been to that, Cardinals fans, I, I suggest giving it a shot. Um, all the money's for a good cause. It's a lot of fun. I mean, all the big diehard Cardinals fans go, and, and, and it's just sort of one big love fest, but it, it is a lot of fun. Um, but I would suggest going to that. Spend your weekend there. I will not be there this year. I was there in previous the previous two seasons, um, and it's a lot of fun. I would highly suggest it. Um, Alex, I don't have anything else for you. Uh, we hope to get more content out there, but uh, we need some news too. Uh, so hopefully when uh, pitchers and catchers start reporting here in the next couple of weeks, or next month rather, um, we'll start getting into more consistent content. But we'll be around until then. We haven't been updating to Facebook and Twitter that much because there's really just honestly just nothing to say. Uh, it's that time of year, folks. Uh, if you guys have questions for us too, yeah, don't be afraid to we ask like to interact. on the Twitter and Facebook. We'll get back to you. We get notifications on our phones when you guys send us stuff. So don't be afraid and to ask. Ask opinions on certain things, and by all means, we'll be ready to answer them. And finally, we are still working on our big surprise for you guys and sort of where this podcast is going in the long-term future. Uh, we're going to hold withhold those details still. We are still working out some kinks and some details. Um, but within the next couple of weeks or a month, or a couple of weeks, hopefully, we we'll have more finalized details and a very exciting plan for you guys but until then Alex it was fun talking to you and arguing and debating this ballot I am Paul Epi and this is the Olympic Stretch podcast recorded on January 8th for release on January 9th have a good night and have a great week everybody see ya